Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at. This is Dr. Sanchez, and I am going over the competency for mid-career HR professionals. And this is regarding business acumen. We have gone over the early career uh, competencies, and now we're focused on the mid-year, I'm sorry, mid-career competencies, business acumen. So uh, we're going to go over an introduction, the overview of SHRM's competency model, and then the definition and components of business acumen. So we're going to describe two elements of SHRM's competency model um, that are applicable for the mid-career levels and apply the concepts related to business acumen explain the relevance of business acumen competency to the job of the HR professional and as you've seen in other webcasts identify and explain the sub competencies and behaviors that underline the business acumen competency analyze the role that the business acumen competency plays in the HR professionals real world issues and demonstrate the ability to uh, to the business acumen competencies in various contexts. So, this purpose is to provide the undergraduate and graduate level students with an overview of the mid-career components of SHRM's competency model and provide focus on the consultation and business acumen competencies. As previous webcast, I had done a consultation competency model webcast and now for the mid-career the last one is the business acumen so as you can see the SHRM competency model for early career we discuss communication relationship management ethical practice and HR knowledge or expertise for the mid-career there's two that are important consultation and business acumen uh, if you remember this, it's the levels of experience. So this is HR professionals in their mid-career, usually three to seven years of experience. You have a generalist or experienced specialist. They manage projects. The titles usually include HR manager, uh, strategic business manager, generalist, and specialist. So we've done consultation competency, and if you have not reviewed it, please do so uh, before you do the business acumen. All right, so what is business acumen? The ability to understand and apply information to contribute to the organization's strategic plan. So when CEOs, and every year SHRM does, actually every two years SHRM does, a survey about their HR departments and this business acumen is our lowest score as HR professionals and the reason that is is because they don't think we know the business and how HR contributes to the organization's strategic plan so you know, as I talked about before, we have to know our technical skills, benefits and comp, employee relations, training and development, workforce planning. But our number one um, challenge and things we need to understand is the strategic plan and business acumen is part of that. So. The description is exhibiting strong business acumen means you're not just part of HR, you're part of the business. You understand how the organization achieves its goal and you align HR activities with achieving these those goals. It is a competency about the big picture that takes you beyond the boundaries of your organization to your industry or field in the largest sense and forces you to seek new HR best practices that fit your organization and enable it to move forward. So that's when we started having the strategic business partner where and we developed 
centers of expertise. So the specialist would be in the centers of expertise, compensation, benefits, talent management, succession planning, performance management, and all of these centers of expertise were usually like in the headquarters or in a center where they worked on things uh, because they were excellent in that particular specialty. We then developed the strategic partner, which was in the business, where it's usually one person or two that's supporting operations, supporting sales, um, and supporting various other departments. And that was meant for us to really understand the business and help our clients achieve their goals and align human resources activities with achieving those goals. So, for example, if you are um, a strategic business partner or human resources manager in the operations and those operations start having high turnover um, you would present as the strategic business partner um, particular metrics as to why the turnover is so high and of course um, tell your customer or show your customer how much that costs the business that's business acumen uh, understanding that uh, operations needs people, understanding that that helps with productivity, it lowers their cost, but where is the turnover and how much is that costing the operations department? And then finding ways or best practices that will help that department to lower the turnover. And that can be um, things that help retention, whether it's, you know, uh, nothing comes to mind immediately, but uh, bonuses for people who stay a year or so, um, referral bonuses, those kinds of things can help the business with retention. So it's extremely important for us to know how human resources ties to the business and how we can help them with performance management of their employees, with cost containment, with various other issues, retention, recruiting, uh, that's all part of what we do. So here's some of the examples you take your HR knowledge of metrics developed at the early level and using the data they give you define HR activities in terms of uh, value added impact and utility from a cost benefit analysis, CBA perspective. So I take my example of lowering the cost uh, for turnover, but how much value are you getting from each employee um, and there's the added value metrics uh, cost benefit analysis of what each employee in operations brings to the department in monetized ways and bringing that metric is important for your operations people to see <coughs> excuse me Participating in round table discussions with members of other functional areas allows you to share your knowledge to benefit the organization and also to gain more knowledge and perspective and enhance your business acumen as you learn from your colleagues. I cannot tell you enough about what this is and why this is important because as you participate in any business roundtable discussions in any departments sales marketing finance you learn so much about what the business is trying to achieve and you 
share your knowledge of human resources. Well, this is the cost per hire, and this is the training and development ROI, and this is uh, <clears throat> the cost uh, benefit analysis for every employee that we hire. This is the retention metrics. Those are showing the knowledge you have and tying it in to the different departments. Uh, at mid-career level, you will probably have a staff, so provide opportunities for your staff members to work across, uh, across functional projects to develop their business acumen or identify job opportunities across departments. I, again, if you have a staff of HR professionals, the way they're going to learn is participating with you. Uh, I'll share a story. I was uh, a human resources uh, staffing manager at Coca-Cola, and I guess my boss saw that I really wanted to be promoted, uh, and I knew as a woman and a Latina that it was very difficult to get to the vice president level, but that I absolutely needed labor relations. And I asked him, can I participate in union negotiations? Because I need that if I'm going to be a vice president of human resources. And if I don't have it, no one's going to hire me into the bigger companies like American Airlines and Boeing and Delta. And so he allowed me to do that. I was in my mid-career. I was a, a staffing manager for, like I said, Coca-Cola in California. And I cannot tell you how much I learned. And he helped me um, understand how this contract was going to affect the company. And he gave me projects to look at um, in, you know, benefits analysis and salary analysis and staffing analysis, it really helped me to learn how to negotiate contracts. So what's the sub-competencies? Strategic agility, knowing the strategic plan is really important and I'll tell you, once you know the strategic plan, you can figure out how HR fits into that plan. Business knowledge, systems thinking, economic awareness, effective administration, knowing knowledge of finance and accounting. And this is super important as an HR practitioner. Find somebody in finance that you trust, that they can show you all the numbers associated with people. That's benefits, compensation, um, sales, uh, marketing, um, and have them discuss with you how that affects and what kind of needs they need from HR. And that was probably one of the best things I did in my early career because I learned a lot about finance, accounting, and sales, and marketing. And, and that helped me. I also had a mentor uh, in technology at Pepsi. And he is the one that helped me get promoted and come to Texas uh, as a director at Burlington Northern Santa Fe. I learned technology. He was my mentor. I asked him to be my mentor. He was the vice president of and CIO at PepsiCo. And I told him I wanted to be an executive. So he knew I needed help in technology. And that was critical for me because Burlington Northern Santa Fe was merging and I became uh, the director of human resources for the technology group. Uh, labor markets, business operations, um, knowledge of government and regulatory guidelines. This is probably one of our uh, best competencies. HR practitioners always keep up with the latest and greatest laws and regulations. 
Uh, it's difficult if we have companies worldwide or um, U.S. wide because California has a different regulatory uh, guideline for wage and hour than uh, Texas. So we've got to keep up on all of those. And then understanding organizational metrics, analysis, and business indi in indicators. Um, here's other behaviors demonstrate an understanding of strategic relationship between effective HR management and core business. I've spoken about that. Demonstrating a capacity for understanding the business operations and functions. Um, please, please, when you are in front of the business, do not say, no, you can't do that. And the reason why is you will immediately shut down your business partners. You need to say things like, well, let me figure out if there's an opportunity to do that. And that allows your business operations to see that you're in a partnership. The minute you say, no, we can't do that, it's against the law, they shut down. And it, it probably is against the law. But if you go back and say, you know, you can do this part of it, but this part of it you can't do because it violates this law. Um, I think that's a better way to address your business partners. Understand the industry and the business and the co competitors. Um, this is important to know because all of us are in individual industries. So in the airline industry, that's one. Railroad industry, Coke and Pepsi were soft drink industry. There's the oil and gas industry. There's finance. And what you should do as HR practitioners, understand the environment and the competitors because those are the ones you're going to benchmark with on compensation, on benefits, any of those things. Uh, make the business case for human resources, return on investment, the ROI as it relates to efficient and effective organizational functioning. I recommend that HR practitioners take uh, uh, an HR metrics course and um, there are some out there, either in um, junior colleges or universities. There's also, um, I can't think of it right now, but um, I think it's Ernst and Young. They do an HR metrics. Um, so if you just Google HR metrics training, you'll come up with a lot of them, and it's usually a day. It's fantastic, and it shows you all the metrics is used for HR. SHRM also has it on their website. They have all the metrics that HR uses uh, to d develop the ROI. Understand your organizational metrics and how they uh, measure success. Uh, and that's why I say buddy up with your finance folks. They know the organizational metrics and they can share that with you. Uh, use organizational resources to learn the business and operational functions. Uh, use organizational metrics to make decisions. That's extremely important because if you make decisions based on numbers, People will respect you for your business acumen. And so I'll give you an example. After 9-11, we lost, lost a lot of, lot of customers. And I needed uh, our employees to get retrained on all the safety um, nuances that had started. We didn't have TSA. Uh, we needed new training for security. And I had to go into the uh, VP of Finance and ask for a lot of money. Um, just saying something like we need it is not something that he was going to be keen on. So I showed the metrics 
and the ROI that would help get back our customers because of our safety record and our safety training. Um, and it worked. I got the money. So it's understanding those metrics to make the decision. Uh, market HR, both internally and externally. Um, I talked about ROI, but externally we, we need to do some employment branding. And I think most of you do that when you go out and recruit, um, showing them who you are and what you stand for, especially in recruiting millennials. Leveraging technology to solve problems. I spoke about that as well. All right, so how do we develop our business acumen skills? Well, read a book, um, newspapers, uh, topics such as business practices, marketing, entrepreneurness, negotiation, economics. Um, SHRM has some great webcasts about business practices and entrepreneurism. Um, and so this is a great way to build your acumen. Join a professional or industry association. Join SHRM locally. Uh, they usually have speakers that come from the industry and they speak about what's their business. Um, business continuing education at the universities. Most of them have a human resources uh, degree and they will uh, talk about different things like uh, metrics. Uh, participate in company projects, special initiatives. We've talked about that before. Get on a cross-functional team with finance, accounting, marketing, and operations. This is, I cannot underscore how important that is for you because you will learn so much. And at Burlington Northern Santa Fe, we were uh, developing technology that was going to bring Burlington Northern and Santa Fe together. And uh, as a director of Human Resources for Technology, I would be involved in this cross-functional team to find out how we were going to integrate finance, accounting, marketing, and operations. It was phenomenal experience, so something like that. Uh, study your financial statements to develop a comprehensive understanding of what drives profitability and cash flow. Early in my career, uh, when I was at Coca-Cola and doing negotiations, I found a finance manager that would help me understand the financial statements because I needed to understand those when we were negotiating with the unions. Synthesize, analyze, market and competitive data, know and monitor your key performance indicators, your KPIs, and seek out a mentor who possesses expertise in areas which you wish to develop. And that is something, again, that will help you. My example of wanting to know union negotiations, I sought out my boss and said, I really want to participate may I be in those negotiations. Of course, he said, don't open your mouth, just listen. And I'll give you assignments, which I was very thankful for. So thank you again for listening to this webcast. I hope it was helpful. Excuse my raspy voice. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you either email or telephone.